Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Apartments are like politics. They turn people against one another, but it's really the complex owner who's the villain. Obviously, your neighbor isn't in the right, OP. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe with the turned on bell so you don't miss the new video every single day. Our efforts to reduce noise aren't working. Fine, we won't make an effort anymore. I live in an apartment above another apartment. Since we first moved in, we got regular noise complaints from our neighbor below saying that the noise of my son, four, jumping off furniture is driving them crazy. He's not jumping off furniture, he's tripping and dropping toys because he's four and he's clumsy, but we apologized and encouraged him to be more careful. The complaints kept coming in regardless, so we bought thick foam mats to cover half of our floor to deaden the noise. They're ugly looking and I hate them, but we want to be good neighbors. The complaints stopped. We didn't hear anything for months until this morning. This morning I was dressing my son for school. He'd got new runners that light up, so obviously the first thing he did was stamp his feet to activate the lights. He happened to be standing on the half of the floor not covered in foam. I also happened to knock over my sweeping brush on the bare floor too as I rushed out the door. When we got downstairs, the neighbor leaned out her window, yelling about how the noise woke her up and it's ridiculous that we're so loud, etc. I apologized and explained about the shoes, but she cut me off and said it didn't matter and that we were being inconsiderate. I started to get annoyed and was explaining again about the efforts we made to reduce noise and she cut me off again and snapped, well, obviously it's not working. So I said, okay, if it's not working, then we can stop putting the effort in, thanks, and left. When I came back, I took up all the ugly foam mats and put them in the attic. Screw her. When she comes knocking to complain again, I'll tell her to invest in earplugs. And our second story. Entitled man learns a life lesson to never mess with truckers or their friends. So for context, I work for a local tow truck company as the manager and the roads outside our city up the hills are famous for being tricky and full of deadly turns to drive on. We're a busy company, especially during heavy rain periods where the roads are almost impossible to ride with cargo trucks. The owner of the company is a sweet old lady and she does her best to help the truck drivers have the best time possible during this crappy situation. We let them buy coffee and snacks and the stops on us and they're very grateful for it. The costs are honestly not too high, especially because our contracts are quite hefty due to said roads, plus many other regular people who don't know better how to drive there. Every week I go to the local truck stops to confirm how much we have to pay them all. I can do that by just a couple of phone calls or messages, but if I have the chance to leave that office, I'll take it in a heartbeat. The workloads can be downright cruel sometimes, so that's a good break for me and the owner doesn't mind at all. I'm known there to be the person who pays for the trucker's coffee and food, and while I always tell that the company's paying for it, they're very grateful anyway, plus we treat them with dignity and respect they deserve, so that's another big plus. There was a day last year in the middle of summer, a big storm going on that swamped me with work. I had to help our 22 drivers to locate and retrieve people's cars, constantly receiving calls for help, so much so that dread noise still hammers my head to this day. I had an assistant, but even so, it was way too much for only two people to handle. We spent from 5 a.m. to 5 a.m. breaking our backs and minds that day, the roads even worse, so we had to work overnight, and at 5 a.m. I was leaving home to rest, and the owner said she could cover the weekly visit to the stops. I thanked her, but told not to care about the one stop in particular because it was on my way home. Our office is located some miles off our city. Once I arrive in my regular stop to get a most earned mountain of food and so much coffee it could thicken my blood, I was met by all the regulars, talked with everyone about my crazy storm and chit-chatting while my order was being done. It arrived and I was feasting on it. Then I hear a loud man yelling something in the lines of, what do you mean you can't help me? This is your job to the cashier. I look back and tell myself, what a crazy bee turd. It was Roger, fake name. He keeps screaming at the cashier about something with the tires of his car, so I block the noise off my mind to finally eat my sustenance deed for an entire family. Then I hear a sharp and annoyed, hey you, coming from behind me. I thought I was in the way of someone to catch one of the condiments close to me, so I say, my bad, push the basket with them aside, and keep eating. 
Then I hear a loud stomp and someone, Roger, pulling me by my shoulder, yelling at me, Fire that awful employee immediately! I was still using my officer badge and clothes, so it's understandable Roger confused me with the manager. But I was just about over one of the most stressful days of my life, and eating is sacred for me. So I simply released from his grip, turning back to my food, saying, Go F yourself! I could hear the cashier giggling and the owner, Bob, fake name, who happens to be behind the counter getting people's orders, giving a good loud laugh, then promptly telling, I'm just a customer and he's the one who runs the business. Roger, is that how you run your business then? Letting rude, lousy cashiers treat your customer as garbage and your other customer harass me without consequences? Bob looks at me and says, I'm terribly sorry you have to go through this, OP. I'll see the bad customer out. Roger gives the biggest gasp I ever saw. How dare you? You let your staff and customer harass good people like this? I'm calling the police. And by the looks of your disgusting food, I bet your kitchen's dirty with rats and cockroaches. I'm calling health surveillance too. I took great offense with this. I told him this food was a thousand times better than whatever pig wash his wife does to him whenever she's not having a sexual affair with others. Roger went into a bursting rage, threatening to get physical with me and yelling some very ruder words to me. But something Roger didn't realize is the restaurant was also full of truckers who were watching their friends being harassed. Some got up to defend us, while others were in the middle in confusion, and I hear a rough, Hey, a-hole, get the hell out of here. And when I look back, there were these three angry guys, each one with a mechanical tools in their hands, and one with a fire axe looking like they were ready to kill. My heart skipped a beat, and I froze in place with the sight of the axe, and that seems to have convinced Roger too because he started walking quite hastily outside, yelling about calling the police. The truckers were behind him, telling him they'd chop his limbs off if he ever comes back. Everything eventually went back to normal, and Bob even let me get that meal for free for all that trouble. Thank you, Bob. The police arrived later, and we explained everything that happened. They asked if Bob wanted to press charges, and he simply said, Don't worry, sir. I don't think he's coming back. Great story, and well written. It all goes to the lesson, be careful how you treat people. And our last story. My neighbors are angry because I refuse to give them my territory to build their pool. My neighbors decided to build a fence, which turned into a large mess. Their fence builder had built the fence over three feet into our property, got caught, removed it, and had it rebuilt. We had a surveyor come out a third time to update our plat to show the fence was still over. HOA got involved and the fence was finally moved off our property. She then went to every neighbor within our section and said that we were horrible people not to give them our property so that they could have a large pool in their backyard. I also found out that my wife and I were the topic of discussion during pool parties because our neighbors were putting rumors out there about us and told others not to invite us to their neighborhood events. Unfortunately, things have not stopped there. Every time we're out in the yard here, they come and just stand on their property and watch us. This has been going on for months, and my family's tried to ignore all of it and go on with our lives. However, another neighbor came up to me last night in a fit of rage due to another neighbor almost hitting her son with their car. She started to cry as she vented to me. I consoled her and tried to give guidance. At this point, her and I had simply waved and gave each other warm hellos and friendly smiles. At that moment, she just needed a friend and comfort. I was happy to be there for her. We said our goodbyes and she started walking off my property. It was at that moment the fence neighbor came rushing out and caught up to my other neighbor and stopped them as they walked back to their house. I thought it was weird but figured they were friends and walked back in my house. A few minutes later, the consoling neighbor walked back to my door and asked to speak with me. They went on to say that the fence neighbor asked if we were friends and went on to tell them that we are nasty people as we called HOA on them to move their fence and wanted me to know that if we needed anything, we could come to them for support. At this point, I'm at my wit's end with these neighbors. My family wants to put a restraining order on them, but I don't know how effective that would be right now. Do we just leave this alone? I feel as though it's escalating and I'm somewhat fearful of her psychotic behavior. Update. A few weeks ago, there was a little boy who rode his bike in our section of the neighborhood. He was from another section, but rode his bike in our section one day. 
The same day, my fence neighbor rode next to him and stopped to ask him some questions. She proceeded to ask this boy how old he was, if he lived here, and which section. The little boy who's 12 got nervous as he was told not to speak with strangers. He immediately turned around, called her a stranger, and started pedaling back to his home. She turned her car around and followed him. She was inches away from running his back tire. The little boy got to his house and ran in to find his parents. My neighbor got out of her car and started pounding on the kid's front door. The father answered and my neighbor immediately began yelling at the man. She stated the boy wasn't allowed in our section of the neighborhood. He was banned. The father said she had 30 seconds to get off his property and that she would be banned from their section and that every neighbor would know about this situation. And he did just that. Hence, why I feel her behavior is escalating at an alarming rate. But I like the idea of cameras and I'll be following that route. I know some may not agree with how he handled the situation, and I respect your opinion. Maybe some would have handled it better, but we tried the best we could. And I guess it's one of those situations where you live and learn. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.